Hi, welcome to Product Review by Watt Hour. In this video, we are going to have a look at this digital multifunction uh, energy meter uh, KWS DC 200, 10 ampere, 50 ampere, and 100. I'm just, the functionality is exactly the same. I'm reviewing the 10 ampere version. So here is a page and the price is around $13 US. As you can see, it shows the voltage, power, current, and this is the energy, watt hour, and it's supposed to be the, the time that passed since you started it and the temperature. So let me open the package. This is the way I received it. We got a manual, very nice Chinese English color, strangely, very good. So with tons of wiring diagram on how to use it. A 10 ampere version, this does not come with any uh, external shunt. 100 ampere and 50 ampere version will come with a shunt resistor. So this has just a power, this is for current, and this is for the main power, and this is a thermistor to measure temperature. Just, they put it in a bag, and this looks very cheap. There is a cover, I have to remove it. Now look at the specs. We have here connectors that connect for the power and measuring the voltage, and the current will pass the current will come from one wire and exit from the other one and it will display it. Uh, push button here and the display, the screen. In here we have a thermistor connector. Let me just connect it. This will show the temperature so you can attach it to any device that you want to get the uh, temperature reading. So we have, as you can see, this is 0 0.05 um, this is a 0 0.05 ohm or 5 milliohm resistor that all the current will pass and we have two potentiometer here to adjust the current and voltage for calibration and also there is a as you see reset button perhaps to reset the values we'll have a look at that this can be from 8 volts to 120 volts that and here it, it is turned on and as you can see the temperature shows because this thermistor is now working now let me hold it in my hand so see it shows the whole degree in Celsius let's see if we can change it or let me just so nice now and in here we can see the voltage so immediately you know you cannot read less than 100 millivolts if you are measuring small voltage because, because there is no voltage yet the current also as you can see for 10 ampere we can see i hope that this is like 10 milliampere and then for power as well so let's press menu what happens So when you press this menu, nothing happens except this changes to capacity, ampere hour, if you're draining or checking the capacity, and this change changes to watt hour. Let me hold it, what happens if I hold it for long? Nothing. So they just put menu, this is, there's nothing, no menu. 
voltage current and all. If you want to uh, insert it in a panel, you see these connectors. So this clips, here is the panel size. And the panel size should be 78.2 millimeters by 73.4 millimeters, 22.1 millimeters. Outer size is 84.6, 84.6 millimeter. Uh, DC 200. So the supply voltage can be 8 to 12 volts. Very nice. The test voltage that it can measure. So I'm going to connect it to a 9 volts battery. That's amazing from 8 to 120. And the voltage it measures from 0 to 200. Perhaps this DC 200 refers to the voltage. And the current is 0 to 1, uh, 10 ampere, and power is up to 1200 watt. And then energy ampere hour. So that is ampere hour, the capacity, and then the energy, W hour, watt hour. And timing 0 to 200, and from minus 90 to 99 degrees Celsius. So they did not mention the resolution This on my website robojacks.com the link is below this video now let me explain the wiring straightforward so we have these three wires the yellow goes to the power that you are measuring okay so this is 7 220 volts you can use the same power to power this up there is two way to measure the voltage and the power. If you want to measure independent power, for this to turn on, we need to connect our power supply to these two, red and black, for the tiny. This yellow is to measure the voltage. Let me connect my power supply. And here's a wiring diagram when you use external power supply and your battery is between 0 to 200 volts. You connect the positive from your battery to your load and from negative you will connect the negative to the negative of the meter and the positive will be connected to the negative of the load because this positive means it's pointing to the other direction. Now we need 8 to 120 volts to be connected so the meter is on. Now if you don't connect the yellow still this will work you will measure the uh, current only but no voltage and because the power is multiplied so you will not be able to read the power and uh, energy so you have to connect this yellow to the positive this way you can read it if your power supply is between 8 to 120 volts you do need this external you can, can disconnect the black because we have one black this portion is the same except with red you will connect it to the positive now what happens is that we are powering from the same battery this module to turn on and with the yellow we are reading the voltage so this is with a 10 ampere and if you're using 50 or 100 ampere version with the shunt resistor and if you're using the shunt resistor with 50 or 100 uh, ampere version this is a 100 ampere then the positive will be connected to one side of shunt so the negative the negative will be connected on this side where this goes to the negative of your power supply and the positive of your meter will be connected on this side where this goes to the load so the positive is now connected in here and this goes to your load in this case uh, if this voltage is like 0 to 200, 200 volts then you need external power because this can be 1 volt, 2, 3, but if it is above 8 volts then and less than 200 volts then disconnect this black you don't need external power again correct the red to power this up and yellow to measure remember this cannot be more than 120 volts if you connect it like this because this red cannot tolerate any voltage above 120 volts and the meter cannot work if this voltage is less than 8 volts for that reason you need external power or use this configuration
now I've connected my power supply with 10 volts we're going to measure the current and here I'm gonna use I'm going to use this Rigal electronic load here is my electronic load this is the electronic load DL3031 and these are the two terminals that from the circuit will be connected in here and we will see the voltage here and the current so we will uh, read the input voltage here and that is the voltage on the load as you can see here we are reading 10.5 and exactly this is the exact value which is very correct but when it goes 4 we don't see the other values so this is not that accurate but let's see get to watt hour by pressing this button it goes up and down turn it on so the power started showing and as you can see the voltage the current is 2 ampere and the voltage it shows 10.3 and here it shows 10.4 or 5 it fluctuates but this is the most accurate one and the wires or the wire that I'm using are very thick wires so this is 12 AWG as you can see so they can handle enough current for 10 ampere I'm not worried about that and now I'm going to increase the current and then read it so this is now 2 ampere we are reading 2.0 to 20 milliampere or 30 milliampere more so let's go 3 ampere and here we are reading 3 ampere the current and here is the voltage as well and here as you can see the time is started ticking and we are reading one minute if it was in, in terms of capacity uh, 70 milliampere hour or 0 0.07 ampere hour have been drained let's go 4 ampere so we are reading 4 and here is four let's go five so that's exactly five very accurate that's nice let's go six let's go seven let's go for eight so now eight ampere is being passed through this so now as you can see 80 milliampere extra is shown here 10 so this is, this is now the maximum that this can handle. Now I'm turning off the power supply and turning it on. let's see if if it holds the values so I turned it off fully let's turn it on again as you can see the energy shows the time also three minutes the clock is not blinking so it means it's holding the power depends on the current because the current is zero the power also shows zero so this is very nice very expensive um and here now let's reset this so this time is resetted and this energy 
or capacity that have been used. Now let's reset this. At the back it says it's supposed to be resetted by this button, but somebody commented on the website that it will be resetted by this push button. Let's hold it and see if the time is resetted, the watt hour and the time. Yes. So it worked perfectly, so this button is not menu, it's just reset button and that's it. For that we have to press this reset button here, that push button, that one, for three seconds. So let me hold it, one, two, three and four. So it has not reset it. Let, let's hold it longer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No, still not reset it. So maybe it's not functioning. Now let me open this and see what is inside. This is amazing. Very good quality build. Let's have a look at this chip even though you can see it here. Let me put it, let me zoom in. I couldn't find any information. It seems this has been just printed on something else to mislead people. I'm not sure. Let's have a look at this one. So this is new Voton, as you can see MS51FB9AE, that's a microcontroller like Arduino, MS51FB9AE, as you can see this is embedded IT8051 base CMO semiconductor running at 24 megahertz and 16 kilobyte flash, 1 kilobyte SRAM and Let's see what this is. This should be some kind of op amp. This is H6203. This is the main shunt resistor 0.05 ohm or 5 milliohm. And here I remove this, and this is a display on this side. Custom display with those values. And this is a display driver. But the problem is with this reset button, it didn't work well. The top one is for the current and the bottom is for the voltage. So always look at this shunt resistor and this is closer to that. So this is for the current. This way you don't forget it. This is the voltage. If you, if you see the deviation, because this shows 10.4, we accept it. Let's say you want to change it. And let me change my voltage first. Now I've set the voltage at 12 volts and you can see this shows very accurate at the moment but for some reason if you want to adjust it and change it here is how you can do it one 
this is for the voltage and that's for the current so I'm gonna adjust this one I rotated it and it is 11.5 and let's rotate it back and let's go back to 12 so 12.2 Now I set the current to 5 amperes and 12 volts. Fix the voltage again. And now I'm going to rotate this current potentiometer, this variable resistor for the current. Let's see if I can change it. Yes, now it is rotating, so you 4.8, 4.7. I changed it. The 5 is shown now as 4.2. Let me adjust it back to 5. Point six. I have, have to go back. So now it's four point nine seven. Very close. Thank you for watching. This was the review of this KWC KWS DC two hundred, the ten ampere version. The module worked as expected, except in my case, the reset button didn't work. Uh, this might be just for this model that might be defective. I have to try to see if there is an issue with it. Other than that, this, is, this looks and seems very solid built, good quality. All the surface mount device seems to be installed very professionally clean. So a little expensive but definitely good product please thumb up the video and also share and subscribe i really appreciate it in this video we are going to do the review of this peace fair pzem015 and pzem013 which is a 0 to 200 volts DC and 0 to 300 ampere in the range of 10 ampere, 50, 100, 200 and 3 ampere, uh, 300 ampere uh, power, voltage, current, energy and capacity meter. I'm going to explain the module, uh, the features and how to set it up. After that, I'm going to open it when we will have a look at inside of this. Then I'm going to show you how to wire it. After that, we are going to talk about battery and voltage of the battery and then we are going to test the current up to 100 ampere and then we are going to power it up with a battery and also check some parameters of the battery and drain uh, lithium iron phosphate battery let's get started with this <laughs> 